I'm just going to give, it looks like we still have people joining. So I'm going to wait just one more minute um, until we uh, jump back in. Um, but I wanted to uh, just kind of thank everyone for being here. Um, and I also wanted to uh, give you this space right now uh, to, for one, make sure that you can hear me um, and see all of us. So if you could use the chat module on your GoToWebinar uh, panel, or I'm sorry, your Zoom panel, and uh, let us know like who you are, what organization you're with, um, you know, if you've participated before, uh, that would be really helpful in letting us know that you're here. And then also making sure that technically wise, like you can hear me, that'd be great. Well, I hope everybody's having a good uh, a good start to their beginning of their weekend. That'd be nice. Now, how did your how did your uh, technical training go yesterday? Uh, it was or, really I mean, good. your intensive training. Yeah, it was it was a it was a great day of training. We had lots of nonprofits there, and uh, yeah, some really good uh, really good presenters and helpful helpful information. So great. Good, 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 good. Um, okay, I am gonna go ahead and get started. Um, it looks like we, uh, people are able to hear me, which is awesome. Um, so let us go ahead and move forward. So first things first, I wanted to um, introduce ourselves to everyone. Uh, my name is Dawn, I'm with Mighty Cause. Um, uh, Sarah is also uh, here with Mighty Cause as well, and we are the project managers for uh, NWA Gives. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, this is the first time that they are utilizing the Mighty Cause platform, so we're very excited to have them on board. Um, and we really hope that um, you know your transition to this new platform is smooth. Um, that's our goal. So if you have any like questions or problems or anything, um, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us know so that we can help you. Um, I also have Chris and Laura um, here with me as well. Um, so uh, um, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves since you're here and you know we want to hear from you too. Well, hello. Hey, my name is Chris Haas. I'm uh, one of the uh, uh, members of the board of directors for uh, NWA Gives, and we are so excited uh, not only to uh, uh, for the nonprofit that I that I help uh, run. Um, here in the community, but also for just the bigger, broader uh, uh, day of giving that's about to take place for everybody. And so it's so exciting. And um, I'm, I've lived here for uh, quite a while here in Fayetteville, love Northwest Arkansas, and, and so glad to be a part. Hi, guys. I am, am sitting in a hotel room with really terrible internet access. So I hope you can hear me, although I might look glitchy and strange, but um, I'm Laura Dietrich and I am the project coordinator for Northwest Arkansas Gives. And um, I'm just really excited to have the opportunity to get to know all of these amazing nonprofits that we have right here in our backyard and um, to do whatever I can to help you guys make this such a great event. Um, so um, feel free to call me or uh, send me a message at any time. I'm here for you. So um, I'm happy to get to know you and I am excited about our, our big giving day. Thanks you guys. We're very excited to work with Chris and Laura and uh, you know, kind of help them help you all. So please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us uh, as you're getting prepared for the NWA Gives Giving Day. Um, okay, so uh, next item is I wanna just go over the agenda really quick. Uh, we're gonna talk through uh, some basics for the event um, uh, that, you know, important dates, things like that, that you all will, will need to be aware of. We're going to walk through the prizes available for this year's event. Uh, and then we're going to, the meat of the webinar is going to be all about campaign strategy. Uh, and then after that, we're going to go through a QA. and a um, And so one of the, uh, um, if you have a question now, you're welcome to put it into the Q&A um, uh, uh, 
module in your Zoom panel, uh, but you're welcome to wait until the end of the presentation as well. Uh, we will um, make sure that we leave some space for that. Um, so I wanted to put out um, our first poll. Um, I wanted to see from everyone if uh, they, if you've participated in uh, NWA gives before, um, let us know. Um, so it should pop up for everyone and you can uh, basically, you, you, hopefully you know if you've participated in the past. Um, uh, let's see, so um, I'll give everyone just a second to answer that and, uh, and then um, we'll move forward. Okay. Okay, so it looks like um, for everyone here, uh, we've got about 75% of you that have participated before, which is, you know, really awesome that you're coming into this with some prior knowledge. Uh, and then about 25% who is your first year participating. So welcome. We're very excited to have you. Um, so I will go ahead and let Chris talk about some of the basics for this year's NWA Gives, important dates, et cetera, um, that, you know, everyone should know. Okay. Well, as you guys know, the website nwagives.org is where it all, all happens. Um, and so that's where we need to direct, you know, all of our, uh, all of our giving on the day, as well as there's so much there in terms of resources uh, for you guys to, uh, to go and check out and become familiar with so that you can uh, get everything ready for that day. Um, as I said before, I'm, I'm on the board of directors for NWA Gives. We uh, have been uh, leading this project. This, this will be the fifth year, uh, so we're excited about that. And as you all know, the most important date is April the 7th, uh, which is a Thursday. So from eight o'clock in the morning until eight o'clock at night uh, will be the day of giving. However, we are also opening up giving uh, one week ahead on March 31st. And so people can do early giving uh, that will, the, the money there will flow into your totals uh, for the day of giving. So if you've got people that want to give early, or if you want to make that part of your strategy, um, you can certainly do that. And so that's one of the advantages um, to, uh, to this year. Um, everyone that's a 501c3 uh, in the seven county region that we have is eligible to participate every year. Uh, registration is required and officially registration closed yesterday, uh, but we may have a few more that uh, contact us and, and may want to try to register. And so uh, we'll have a couple of more days to allow that to take place, um, but then we're gonna close it for good and kind of go from there. Uh, next slide. Um, Okay. I can go through this part, Chris. And this is where you're gonna. This is where you're gonna cut in. And, and let me just say yeah. too that we're we're so excited um, about the idea of just inspiring generosity through this day. And uh, and we know that there are so many needs um, in the community that each of our nonprofit helps to uh, to address and to uh, uh, to make our community a better place. And so uh, we want the DNA of Northwest Arkansas to be generosity. And, uh, and so we, we feel like we're on our way with that. Thanks, Don. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what does my organization need to do to prepare and get ready for NWA Gives? Um, first thing you'll want to do, which hopefully the majority of you have done uh, at this point in the game, is create a landing page for your organization using the NWA Gives site. Um, so really, once you register, you'll um, you'll have access to that page and can customize it. Our first webinar was all about creating uh, and customizing your profile to be able to use that for NWA Give. So if you haven't done anything yet um, with creating a landing page, I highly recommend going back to the first webinar and um, seeing all the things that you can do. We do a product uh, demo walkthrough so you can see where to find everything um, to help make that help helpful for you. Um, Another thing that you'll want to do is access the nonprofit toolkit and, you know, really review those materials for additional support. We have a lot of really great material in the toolkit. Um, we have, uh, you know, basic questions. How do I find my profile? What link should I use? That kind of stuff. We have uh, on our on-demand webinars. We have a couple ebooks you can download. We have a lot of really great items uh, for you to be able to, to access and utilize all for free um, in the NWA Gives toolkit. Um, 
The next thing that you'll want to make sure you're doing is broadcasting your campaign's message um, using your existing communication net communication networks. So that's a super fancy way of saying post on social media and send some emails to people. So you want to make sure that you're communicating with your with your supporters to let them know, you know, what they need to be doing at what point in time. Um, we're, we'll talk about it more later. But you know, if your organization wants to uh, just really take it up a notch and utilize peer to peer fundraising, like talk to your supporters now, they're able to join your team now. Um, and, and set up their pages and things like that. Or if you want to just, you know, really get people involved in early giving um, or, you know, on the day of, then make sure they're aware of, you know, where they need to donate, when they need to donate and all that good stuff. Um, another thing that you can do now uh, is start preparing to secure matching grants um, and really utilize those prizes to uh, encourage your donors to give. Um, so we'll go through um, matching grants and the tools that you have with that um, later on, as well as we'll walk through the prizes in more detail. Um, and then uh, the next thing, you know, recruit individuals to be peer to peer fundraisers for your organization. This is uh, this is a piece of you know strategy that really kind of takes your fundraising efforts above and beyond because individuals are helping your organization, you know, if they take that load off of you, um, there's, you know, some work at the beginning recruiting them and then having them go out into the into their support networks, getting you new donors, um, taking that, that lift off your shoulders. Um, it's a really great way for you to kind of up your game. Um, but if you're not quite there yet, that's totally fine, too. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you can do what you have bandwidth for. Uh, and then lastly, you know, Try to think outside the box, be engaged and have fun. So you want to get creative with it. There's lots of things that you can do to really pump up the spirit and get really involved with uh, the giving day. Um, and so, you know, hopefully this, you know, as we get through more of the meat of the webinar, you'll have uh, some ideas that you can utilize in, in terms of, you know, upping your strategy and really trying to win some of those prizes and obviously reach your own goals uh, for the actual giving day. Um, so I mentioned using the resources that are provided to you. So um, you can find those resources by going to nwagives.org. Um, underneath the resources tab on the menu uh, is nonprofit FAQ, uh, as well as donor FAQ. And then you have the Mighty Cause Toolkit, which is where you're going to find the on-demand webinars, um, the eBooks, et cetera, um, links to specific articles in our support forum that are helpful. Um, and then we, you also have the NWA Gives uh, training uh, that links to the specific NWA Gives um, website that has lots of videos um, that uh, I think Carol has done for you in the past um, that still are super applicable. So if you want to visit that site too, um, I definitely recommend it. Um, do you, either of you, have anything additional that you want to say about that specific training site? I was just going to say, I can't stress enough how amazing the videos are that Carol did. And they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're fast. They're only five minutes um, a piece. So you can get a lot of information without having to spend a lot of time. So I would absolutely go to the resources tab. It's NWA Gives Training Library. It's fantastic. It, it will give you a ton of information and knowledge very, very quickly. Um, so I would really encourage you all to just at least go check it out. Um, it's kind of broken down into very easy steps. So um, yeah, don't miss that. It's, it's really good information. Yeah, I mean, even just setting aside half an hour just to see what's available and then maybe deciding, picking and choosing what applies to you, what would be most helpful for you. Um, I, I also recommend that as well. So um, utilize those resources. We've worked really hard to get them, you know, all in one place for you all. So um, we'd love for you to take advantage of them. Okay, and now uh, the very exciting piece, prizes. Everyone loves those. Uh, so uh, you can find the prizes for this year uh, on nwagives.org if you go to the rules and prizes tab. Um, all the prizes are listed there, so you're welcome to, you know, check those out at any time, really walk through them with yourself. Um, I'm going to just touch on high level right now, uh, but if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to let us know. Um, so we've got, you know, different um, uh, categories for nonprofits, you know, large, medium and small. We've got first, second and third place for each. Um, we have, you know, an organization with the most money raised. We've got uh, um, 
prizes for different hours of the day. Um, obviously, as you can see, a lot of the prizes are at different monetary levels. Um, a lot of $200 prizes, but you know, the first, second, and third place prizes are really, you know, the the very exciting ones. We also have golden tickets available for you, um, which essentially there's 12 hourly drawings. Um, and you know, as long as you get one gift during that hour, then you're entered in to win that hour's drawing. Um, so it's random uh, and, you know, it's very exciting because, you know, one one winner every hour. Um, and then uh, uh, they've also got a social media prize for um, organizations as well. Um, so really any of these prizes you can you can go after, see which ones that you want to participate in. Um, and uh, uh, that way you can kind of work your strategy around the prizes. But there's lots of money available to win um, to really try and incentivize you, incentivize your donors. Um, prizes are a really great way for you to, you know, continue posting on social media throughout the day, like, oh, I won, or, oh, we have this prize coming up. Um, let's see if we can get it. Um, there's, we'll, we'll go into additional, um, you know, strategies around prizes uh, a little bit later, but these are the prizes available. Um, we're really excited about them. All of them are sponsored by First Security. Uh, so we're really grateful that they have put, um, you know, some sponsorship money in uh, to allow um, the, us to be able to provide these for you. Um, and I say us, but really, you know, obviously it's Chris and Laura. Um, but anyway, so Chris and Laura, do you guys have anything that you want to say about the prizes? Well, I, I know that it's just a, it, it, it does create fun and a sense of momentum. And it's, and it's something we can uh, communicate to potential donors. Uh, I know one that we like to try to go after every year is to try to get the most individual givers uh, to, to give, at least one gift. And so uh, this year for the first time, we have the different levels uh, for large, medium and small nonprofits. Um, and so those are great prizes for you guys to uh, consider, you know, pushing out as well as all the other ones that are on there. So go take 15 minutes, really think about them, strategize about them, and then, and then utilize them uh, to create that fun and that momentum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so getting into campaign strategy involved with NWA Gives. Um, so the first piece that I wanted to kind of put on everyone's radar was uh, mapping out your campaign with with mini goals. So uh, as you know, early giving starts March 31st. Um, if you want to participate in early giving, I highly recommend that you do. Um, but you know, kind of think through what are your goals for this year's campaign? You know, is it number of donors? Is it um, dollars raised? Um, if you know you're utilizing that peer to peer strategy, is it number of supporters? like signing up to participate with you? What are your goals for this year's NWA Gives? Um, once you have your goals, then it's easier to like break them down into kind of those stepping stones. So, you know, you want to make sure you hit your mini goals. Like I, I want to make sure that our organization raises X amount of money during early giving. And then I want to make sure our organization reaches our overall goal of X on the giving day. So how are you going to do that? You know, is it, what are you, what is your strategy going to be um, during the early giving portion? If you're going after that to say, oh, I need to send this many emails. Uh, I need to make sure I'm hitting, uh, you know, if let's say your, your goal is a thousand dollars during early giving, then, you know, you can let your supporters know, you can let your board members know, um, you know, your mom, your dad, you can let everyone know, this is our goal. Like, I'd love to reach $500 by, you know, Sunday um, or, you know, Monday. And then uh, I'd like to make sure that we hit about at least $1,000 on like, you know, the, the very last moment before um, the, the giving day starts. Um, once the giving day begins, then the leaderboards will be visible. You'll be able to see where you stand among the other nonprofits who are participating. Um, and you'll see those funds raised um, with, you know, that you've raised during early giving. So um, I, I highly recommend uh, start like participating in early giving so that, you know, you're able to kind of like just really get out of the gate with a bang um, and uh, uh, have, you know, kind of momentum right, right at the start. Um, obviously, you know, as you come up with these goals, share the goals with their followers. So if you have that thousand dollars 
uh, during your early giving goal, like let your let your supporters know you'll be able to see how much you're raising on your profile page. So you can always let them know there, like how close you are to that early giving goal. Um, and then, uh, you know, hey, we're halfway through. Hey, you know, uh, it's almost NWA Gives Day. Help us reach our thousand dollar goal for early giving. Um, here's where we stand. So like being really transparent, letting them know where you're at with your different goals that you have um, is going to help them know how to help you. Um, we love encouraging organizations to set mini goals because it really helps make the overall goal like more, it, it puts it into breakable chunks so that it seems like it's easier to attain. You know, it's kind of that snowball effect where you do a little bit at a time, but then as you continue to, to do it and grow, you're really gaining momentum and then like finishing strong um, since you've hit all those previous milestones that you've, you've uh, you know, put, put for your organization. Um, <clears throat> so obviously, you know, the mini goals we, think of them as building excitement, generate interest, and then, you know, winning prizes. That's really like one of the big keys is, you know, we really want organizations to win prizes and then obviously, you know, reach your own overall goal for how much that you want to raise during the giving day. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing that, you know, is an initial strategy piece that we really encourage organizations to take advantage of is seed donations. So if you're if you don't know what those are, seed donations are those initial donations that you personally ask people to give to your campaign um, to really help your initiative grow. So you see how we did that seed donations. <laughs> so um, with the seed donations, you know, people to ask uh, board members, uh, staff. Um, really engage volunteers, really anyone in your organization's inner circles, like letting them know, um, especially since early giving is a thing this year, letting them know, hey, listen, we we have this early giving period. We'd love for you to make a donation of, you know, $10, $50, um, whatever you want. Uh, make a donation during this early giving period so that we can we can get out of the gate just ready to go like that way when when as soon as as soon as it starts um at 8 a.m on april 7th posting on social media saying look how much we've already raised help us continue to raise fun money this is our overall goal We're, we want to raise this much money by noon um help us donors and so if you have those seed donations in place people people love popular things some people do most people like popular things but so when you have those donations already in place people can see oh other people are interested and really liking this like I want to be a part of this too and so you know you kind of get the ball rolling a little faster by utilizing those seed donations that you ask from you know more uh the close-knit you know inner circle people of your organization Uh, okay, so um, this next slide, we're going to start talking about matching grants. But first, I want to know um, how many of you have uh, um, used matching grants in the past. So I have a quick poll that I want to do. Um, I'm going to uh, give you a minute to answer that because um, we'd love to see kind of what the uh, experience level is among everyone who's uh, here today to help us out. Again, I'm super sorry for my glitchy screen. I know it's very distracting. I'm really sorry about that. It's okay, Laura. It happens. Um, okay, I'm going to just give a couple more seconds um, for everyone to answer. You know, have you used matching grants in the past for fundraising? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So uh, interestingly enough, it looks like it's half and half. Hmm. So we've got half of everyone has used matching grants before and the other half has not. So um, we're neutral, which is, which is good. Um, so uh, I'll talk to both sides obviously, but um, I wanted to make sure for those of you who have done matching grants before, um, I wanted to put this back on your radar again. Um, uh, obviously, as hopefully what you've experienced in the past with matching grants has been uh, positive. So, you know, uh, going out there and securing a matching grant 
um, and utilizing it to raise more funds. That's really the goal of the matching grant. Um, so uh, um, as a reminder for those of you who have who have you know done matching grants in the past before, um, and then this is good information for those who obviously has not have not, but um, make sure that your um, having matching grants be a part of your strategy is going to really be beneficial for you uh, for your NWA gives um, overall campaign strategy. Uh, matching grants uh, will be available to help you in incentivizing your donors when, uh, you know, either during low periods of the day when you know that, you know, most donors aren't like paying attention, maybe the very early morning hours, um, will be a good time to, you know, kind of put a matching grant up in front of your people, um, or maybe it's the middle of the day um, when you know that your, you know, your, you know, your your donors might not be res as responsive. Making sure that you have something in your back pocket to be able to put in front of them to say you should be paying attention to us right now. This is what's happening. You could double your money, um, or you know, however you want to set it up. So matching grants are a really great way for you to kind of uh, have another messaging piece for your donors during the giving day um, that's interesting because, you know, you don't want to just contact them to contact them. You want to have something to say. Um, and so uh, making sure that you're kind of starting to think about that now um, is a really good, uh, a good idea. So for those of you who have never had a matching grant before, um, you need to secure the matching grant on your own. So it's your matching grant. Um, so uh, ideas for that, you need to prospect. So it's, it's sort of like, you know, how you go after major donors. Um, you, you cultivate major donors. Uh, it's sort of the same way. So, you know, you prospect to see, okay, board members, do you want to, to go all in on a match? Like each of you donate a hundred bucks to go towards a match. Um, let's say you have five board members. If they each donate a hundred dollars, that's a $500 match. That's not insignificant, right? So getting your donors to you know, respond to that. Um, obviously, another, uh, another good place to prospect are your major donors. So if you have a major donor who, let's say they always give um, during quarter two of the year, um, ask them, listen, we have NWA gives. I know that you just generally donate during this time frame every year, but if you could put that money to, to good use um, uh, or to a different type of use uh, for NWA gives, that would be really awesome because we could do X, Y, and Z with it. Um, and then if you have the means, um, look for corporate sponsors, um, you know, local businesses that you have a relationship that, that might usually donate in-kind items. Say, hey, listen, we have, you know, this this uh, idea for a strategy piece we want to we want to use. Um, would you be willing to to actually give us, you know, some funds for that um, for NWA gives? Uh, so those are some, you know, ideas of where you can prospect to get your matching grant funds. Um, so next step is cultivate, communicate, and learn. So you'll want to let them know here's what the matching grants for. Here's how much we're like looking to secure in matching grant funds, um, and then here's how it works. Uh, you know, so if they say, okay, yeah, I, I'm interested in, you know, let's say you have a major donor who wants to give a thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm interested in in doing this, but what does it entail? So you, you know, you can say, listen, it's it's all on us. Like we'll set up the tool, we'll message the donors. You just provide the funds and then we can always, if they want, we can always say this match sponsored by, you know, X person or X business uh, so that they can get that visibility if they if they so desire. Um, but letting them know how you're going to use it, uh, you know, what it's for so that they can know, hey, we're really going to be um, pushing hard to like get more new donors this year. And we really think this matching grant could go a long way. Um, and then that's a, a, a great way for them to understand better about, you know, what their funds are being used for and, you know, how they're really helping your organization in a new and different way. Um, obviously ask, you know, they can't do something unless you ask them. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're letting them know this is our ask for this year. Um, and, uh, you know, if they like, so it says appeal to appeal to their interests. So let's say you have a, a corporate sponsor. Um, companies love visibility, uh, free advertising. So if, um, you know, free, but if they like put together a, um, you know, if they decide that they want to sponsor a matching grant for you, like you can add an image to your matching grant tool um, 
we have a whole set of like uh, matching grant functionality uh, uh, FAQs um, because Mighty Cause has a tool built in that you can utilize during NWA gives that kind of gives visibility into your matching grant. And we'll, I think we'll go into that in the next slide. Um, but, you know, let's uh, let them know, like we can, we can, your logo will be up while the matching grant is live. So people are coming to our site and seeing your logo that you're sponsoring this grant. And so, you know, you'll, that, you know, is an example, you'll want to appeal to their interests um, uh, for the matching grant too. So start the process now. Uh, it can be a long process sometimes to get people, you know, to, to agree to a matching grant, figure out who you want to contact, how many people you want to get involved. Um, so starting that now, starting to think about that now is, is a really good idea. Um, and then with the Mighty Cost tool, there's lots of flexible matching options. So you can let your donor decide if they want. Um, the simplest is obviously the one-to-one -one match, but with the tool, you can do a two-to-one match. Um, uh, I've seen a 50% match before, which is really amazing. Um, but you know, there's lots of different ways that you can set it up uh, within the tool. Um, and so, you know, you could make those decisions. You can decide you want, you know, if your donor wants to be even more involved, you can let them, you know, kind of decide how they want to structure their match. Um, but it's totally up to you. Okay. So um this the uh, screenshot on this slide kind of gives you uh, visibility into what that matching grant tool looks like. Um, you can find the matching grant tool underneath the fundraising section of your dashboard within your organization profile. Um, so uh, when you go in there, you'll be able to see any matches that you've set up, any past matches. Um, and then if you click continue to create a new match, it'll let you set something new up. Um, and you can't see it on the uh, screenshot, but in the bottom uh, right hand corner, there's a little question mark icon. You can click on that to easily access the matching grant support articles or contact our support team if you need help setting up your grant um, or just wanna make sure that you set it up correctly. Um, so uh, like I said, you can create that match right within your account. Um, what happens when the match goes live if you have a set it up within your account? is on, you know, when the match goes live, you'll get a little sticker on your donate button that says one matching grant is live. Um, there will also be a tile, uh, a, a like rectangle tile at the bottom of your account of your, you know, profile page that shows the details of the match. So the corporate sponsor logo, if you have that, um, or, you know, whatever picture that you decide to put in there, um, the name of the match, uh, information about the match, like this is a one-to-one -one match, you know, if you have it like, dollar like dollar value so you know we are matching grants worth a thousand dollars there's a progress bar on the matching grant um this matching grant promoting it here it, it's i i love it i see this a lot and i love it when organizations who have a matching grant take a screenshot of their matching grant tile from their profile and post that on social media continuously throughout the time the matching grants live so even though you know people are coming to the site and you know, if they click the, the um, sticker on your donate button, it'll bring them right to that tile. Uh, but obviously donors might not know to do that. And you wanna let them know, here's where we stand. Plus it's a great messaging opportunity. So taking screenshots of your matching grant tile throughout the time that it's live, um, will you know, posting on social media, sending those images in your emails that you're uh, sending organizations uh, is a great way to promote your matching grant on the day of when it is live. Um, so the last two bullet points, you know, share on social media, promote the matching email campaigns. I highly recommend taking a screenshot of the tile. So it gives that visual piece for donors so they can see. And then um, you can let them know, like oh, it, it, if you have a donor goal, like let's say I we wanna get 20 donors during this hour um, to give any amount of money. Uh, and then we'll get this, this match. Then you can let them know we only need five more donors before you know our match is met um, and we get this, these funds. So please help us out. Um, so it allows them to see visibly and tangibly where you're at with your match um, and really helps promote across the different mediums that you choose to um, communicate them with them on. Um, Chris and Laura, do you have anything about matching grants that you wanna add? Well, I'd just like to encourage everybody to uh, to have a matching grant. I, I think that there is a sort of a magic that takes place when you, when you have one, that it brings excitement to your donors. Uh, statistically speaking, people will 
just by having a grant, it really doesn't matter how much money that you have total, whether it's one to one or two to one or anything like that, just by having one is really good. And so um, if this is your first year, uh, I would just encourage you to reach out to a, a key donor, a couple of board members. Hey, and even if you're only uh, looking at a couple hundred dollars as your, as your matching funds this year, it is still worth it. It is totally worth it. And so uh, I know the first year we did it, we uh, uh, we, we were wanting to have a couple of thousand dollars in matching funds. Um, and then over the years, we've kind of grown that. Um, one of the things we did uh, to be able to do that is we looked at a couple of our givers who had given the year before during NWA Gives, and then we invited them to be our matchers. So they're already used to giving during that time. And, and so they were very receptive. So anyway, uh, think through that, but, uh, but definitely... Uh, this is probably my number one thing that I say is the best thing to do uh, during NWA gifts. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and again, uh, if you want more information about um, the, the tool, um, we might, I think we have an ebook about matching grants in the toolkit. Um, so just getting more information about what that entails. And, you know, maybe if you're new, Maybe this is this is not something you're able to, to take on this year. That's totally fine. Um, you can always look into it and then make sure that that's a part of your strategy for next year. Because um, really the goal is, you know, we want you to continue growing year after year uh, with with this uh, giving opportunity. Uh, so the next section of strategy that I'm going to um, walk through is uh, about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, ambassadors, kind of that um, next level of, of fundraising and strategy that, that you can take advantage of if you're in the position to do that. Um, and, you know, if that's something that, you know, you're, you're not thinking is going to be on your radar for this year, then this is a really good opportunity to kind of learn more about it and think about, you know, how can I... Uh, it, uh, incorporate this into my strategy, not just for NWA gives like this year, but, you know, throughout the rest of the year, because really peer to peer fundraising is a great way for you to be able to activate supporters in a different way, donors in a different way um, and and raise more funds for your organization. Um, so the the first you know piece of it is activating your ambassador. So as you can see from this you know fun little uh, uh, image here, you've got your traditional donations where you've got you as the nonprofit, and then you have each of your donors giving uh, singly, right? So they give one donation. Um, you know if you've uh, put in a program in place, maybe they're recurring donors, which is really awesome. Um, but it's still the same the same donor. Uh, it's that that individual growth, right? Um, then the, uh, you know, the other piece of it is the peer to peer fundraising side of it, where you have you as a nonprofit and then you have, you know, that, let's say, individual donor. But then instead of just being a donor, they're also an ambassador for you. So, you know, they they reach out to their friends and family. So then you have those additional donors that are coming in from this ambassador that you've, you know, kind of partnered with to help spread your mission and your uh, uh, organization's goals and ideals, um, ideas uh, to their networks as well. Because um, as you know, I'm sure you're aware, there, you know, you don't have access to their networks, you have access to them because they're a donor for you, but you don't have access to their networks. And so, you know, having them be an ambassador, taking that next step with you um, is a way for you to reach and acquire those new donors, which is really a, a key piece of growth for any nonprofit trying to get more new donors. Um, I know it's a very difficult thing that a lot of organizations struggle with, but this is one way that, um, you know, is, is one of the strategy pieces to help kind of accomplish that, uh, that piece of it. Um, your, when you have the, you know, ambassadors or individual fundraisers that support you, they're able to share their own personal impact stories of how your organization, you know, has either, either helped them, depending on what kind you are, um, you know, what your mission is, but, uh, or, you know, why they've decided to, you know, support you, like how they're passionate about you. Um, so it helps create um, additional marketing opportunities for you as well, because, you know, you have these individual ambassadors who are willing to, you know, put their story out there to really spread the word about your organization as well. 
So, you know, it, it really amplifies that traditional outreach. Um, instead of the, uh, you know, one to one ratio, you get, uh, you know, the um, increased visibility. Uh, and then, of course, um, hopefully, the, the new donors that come from that as well, that you're able to then cultivate and make as, you know, eventually, hopefully turn them into ambassadors as well to then acquire additional new donors. Um, it helps you raise more funds. Because um, again, it's not just that singular donation, but then you're having them reach out to ask their friends and family for donors or for um, support. Um, and then you also build a different type of relationship with them. It's not just the nonprofit to donor relationship, but then you're asking, it's a it's a bigger ask, right? So you're building those the, the stronger foundation with those people um, and um, just helps kind of even more solidify that support and connection that they have with you um, uh, to continue hopefully throughout the years. Uh, and then on the actual giving day, it's a great way to help you climb up the leaderboard uh, because you're getting individuals to help, you know, kind of spread your word and take that, that asking burden off of you to be able to um, reach out to their supporters and networks. And of course, you know, within the system, you get uh, your reporting is going to reflect all of these donations. You'll know who's giving to you um, and the information collected so that you're able to then after NWA gives, you're able to uh, go out and, uh, you know, hopefully cultivate those new donors that you've acquired to become those, those you know, first level supporters to, you know, build that relationship and then move into that second tier of, you know, being an ambassador for you. Uh, okay, so um, one way to start going about this, if you're interested um, in utilizing it, is you know figuring out who would be good to kind of make that next level ask. Um, you know, so organizations can. Um, there's a fundraise button that you can have on your profile page. If they click fundraise, then it, it prompts them to create uh, an individual fundraising page for your organization uh, for NWA Gives Day. So you know, good people to ask board members volunteers, staff, um, especially volunteers, um, you know, they're, they're already connected with your organization. This is another great way for them to kind of take that next leap um, of supporting you in an additional way. Um, and then board members too, you know, let's say, um, you know, your, your board is active in a very, you know, minimal way. Maybe this is a good way to kind of get them involved even more uh, to help support your organization. Um, and then sometimes people like to have their board members create campaign pages for the giving day. And then they kind of have their board members compete to see who can raise the most money um, amongst the board members. So, you know, maybe if you want to add your own little competitive nature aspect to it, um, depending on, you know, uh, if that works for you, um, that's an idea as well. Um, you as the organization can provide them resources, tips and templates that they can then reuse. Uh, we have uh, uh, resources available that you can use uh, for that, uh, but making sure that they know exactly what uh, they need to be doing and when uh, is definitely important. Um, and then having them uh, create those individual uh, campaign pages for your organization allows them to really, you know, kind of tell their story about how your organization has impacted you, why they want to be involved with you, um, and why others should be involved with you as well. Uh, Chris and Laura, anything to add? I was just going to say, I think that bottom bullet point about allowing them to tell their story gives them so much ownership in your organization, and really, the the transition into that ambassador role is so much easier because they have that connection and that ownership already. And by giving them the outlet to really tell their story to other people, just encourages them to want to go and reach more people for you. So I think that is really a, an important part. Yes, definitely. And that's why I, I think you can also be helpful in giving them some, even writing something about your organization, you know, your mission statement, uh, maybe what uh, what the money is going to be used for during this campaign. So you can, you can give them a little bit of information to put on their fundraising page uh, that would be helpful. And then, so Don, my question is, how do you get the button to show up? So if you've got someone that's going to be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, how do how do we as the nonprofits get that button to be part of our page? Uh, the fundraising button? Yes. 
so it should be automatically on, but if not, um, there is, when you're in your edit mode, there's a little, like, it, it looks like a um, me megaphone, uh, you know, that, like, oh, the thing that she's holding in her hand uh, in the picture. It looks like a megaphone. You click on that, and there's a toggle that says fundraising or fundraiser, and then you toggle it on and off. So it's right on your profile, mm -hmm. and on page editing, you can turn it on and off uh, if you wish. And also, one other question: Will there, uh, will those fundraisers show up on the landing? Like, where, where will they see the, Where will the nonprofits see who's doing the peer-to-peer? -peer, how much is being raised during the day? The day. Yeah, of? that's a great question. So, uh, you do. There is a section within the organization profile um, where any individual people that decide to create campaigns for you for NWA gives will show up there. Uh, they're, they'll have their own little tile. You can click on the tile to go into their page to like check it out and stuff. Um, but uh, it, that section should be uh, enabled already. Uh, but you know, it, it, it's really easy when you're on the page the, or the profile, you can scroll down and you can see that like campaign supporter section and you can hide it or unhide it depending on, you know, what you prefer. Uh, if you unhide it, then all of anyone who's signed up to become a fundraiser for you will show up in that section. Yeah. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention, piggybacking off of what you said, uh, was uh, you do have the opportunity to create fundraising templates, uh, which essentially is you kind of preset items on your individual fundraisers pages. So that's where you could put in that little blurb about your organization. Um, you could even put in questions like why, you know, to help prompt them as they're creating their page. Um, and then you can add in like a, um, a default image that they get, uh, a default goal if you want. Um, this kind of helps set the page up in advance. So then when they click fundraise to set, you know, become a fundraiser for you, it'll say, hey, there's, a, there's a, a template available for you. Would you like to use it? Yes, I would. And then all those things pre-fill so that it's less stuff they have to fill out. They can spend more time on explaining why they're wanting to be a part of you know, supporting your organization. Uh, so it makes it a little easier for them. Um, that Those fundraiser templates are also available under the fundraising section of your dashboard. I, I believe it's all the way at the bottom um, is that uh, tool. Uh, and then, um, for time purposes, uh, I'm going to uh, go very quickly through this slide because I really want to talk uh, heavily about email and social media. Um, but another uh, level that you can you can use for your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is team fundraising. Um, so eventually, this is just uh, essentially this is just uh, another like higher level of the peer to peer, the teams allow individuals to join those. So like, let's say instead of just having each board member make their own individual fundraising page that's connected directly to your profile, you could create a board team and then have everyone collected there. So each of the individual board members make up the leaderboard and any of these pages that you create within your NWA gives um, profile, uh, will count towards your NWA gives total. So if you wanted to kind of take it to that next level um, and, you know, utilize the team fundraising piece of it, you're welcome to. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, if you have any questions about that, um, I think that there's a peer-to-peer ebook -peer e within the toolkit. Um, and so you can download that to find out more information about, you know, setting up a team, kind of uh, strategizing around creating these like different types of peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. Um, that way, you know, you're, you're really uh, uh, taking advantage of all the tools available to you um, if that's in your wheelhouse for this year. Okay, uh, email strategy. Uh, so this is obviously a super important piece um, for your organization during uh, the NWA Gives um, timeframe. Uh, so uh, really what you want to do now is um, uh, I'm going to I'm going to say you want to start planning your email now. Um, now is a great time to start like coming up with your draft emails, um, scheduling them in your system. Um, that way you have all of that done. And then on the day of, you can just think about last minute stuff, uh, email about, oh, we won a prize, email about, oh, we hit our, our noon goal, um, that kind of stuff. When you're writing your emails, um, we highly recommend that you keep them short and sweet. And I would keep it to one call to action within the email. Uh, donors, 
have a lot of stuff going on, as you know, they're very busy. And so you want to let them know, listen, this is the message. This is the call to action. So, you know, calls to action, donate, uh, give now. Um, uh, you know, if, you, if let's say that you want to um, recruit individual fundraisers, you could say, you know, sign up to support us um, or sign up to fundraise for us, um, that kind of stuff. But keep, keep your email messages short and sweet, especially because a lot of donors will review, like check out their emails on their phone. And if you have this whole like novel that you're sending them, um, they're, they're, you know, going to be scrolling through and either not read the whole thing or um, they're, they're, it's going to be too much and they'll, you know, X out of the email and say, I'll read it later, but will they really? Um, yeah, so you want to keep them short and sweet, very simple messaging. They should need, to, they should know what to do with your message within like, five seconds of reading your email. Um, so obviously when you're coming up with stuff, make sure that you're, uh, uh, you're um, uh, oh my goodness, what is it called? The, the subject line, Ugh. Uh, the subject line reflects kind of the call to action within your email so that they get an idea of what you're gonna be telling them to do or asking them to do before they even open the email. Um, another another piece for email strategy is segmenting your audiences. So when you're uh, emailing your supporters, maybe uh, pick a certain message for your higher tier donors. Uh, so like if you if you say, hey, we'd really love for you, you know, here's some suggested donation amounts that we want you to um, to uh, give towards. Um, you know, obviously, you don't want to be telling donors that have given you $500 in the past to give you $25. Um, so you'll want to try and segment your audiences depending on, you know, what kind of relationship that they have with you. That way, their, your message is more personal to them and reflects more of how they fit in with what your organization does. Um, and like I mentioned before, schedule and timing. I highly recommend pre-scheduling as many emails as you can. Um, we do have some information in the toolkit about kind of what that, you know, uh, timeline for emails looks like. So I, I recommend going and checking that out. Um, but definitely scheduling as much in, in uh, as you can is definitely best. Um, and then uh, next, make it mobile friendly. So it kind of goes along with the first bullet point. You want to make sure your messages are short and sweet because if people are scrolling through on their phone, uh, then you don't want it, them to just be overwhelmed by the amount of content or images that you've provided uh, when they're checking it out on a much smaller screen. Um, if you're uh, if you're fancy with emails, then you can A/B test uh, and preview. So essentially, what that means is uh, finding out ahead of time, you know, what subject lines work best for which audiences. So you know, if you want to send uh, group A a certain subject line and then group B another subject line but the same email content, then uh, you can see which email uh, was opened more and then you'll know the subject line winner. So there's a there's lots of information online about A-B testing. So if you want to get fancy with your emails and I, you know, you can just Google it, um, A-B testing uh, for emails and uh, you'll get a ton of information that um, is going to be helpful for you to take your email strategy to that next level too. And, and this is all stuff you can use outside of the giving day, obviously. So um, feel free to, you know, if you're like, ah, A-B testing is too much for me to think about at this point in time, that's totally fine. Uh, then I highly recommend maybe jotting it down and picking it up uh, during the summer when you're, you know, laying out by the beach or something. Because, you know, everyone wants to think about A-B testing when you're by the ocean. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, the last thing is clear ask to donate with a link. Uh, make sure you include a link with each email. Um, you want to make sure that you're sending them to where they need to go that corresponds with your call to action. So if your call to action is just learn more at this point, um, then have them like take them to, you know, either your profile page, take them to your regular website, um, whatever, you know, whatever makes sense with the call to action that you're that you're putting in. Anything else, Chris and Laura? No, I think it looks great. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so lastly, social media strategy um, and then uh, follow up is next. Um, and I'm going to, I know I'm already talking really fast, so I'm really sorry, everyone. There's just a lot of content to go over. Um, but we're going to skip this poll that we have. Um, but essentially, I was going to ask, like, do you have a social media strategy? And then which socials do you use? Um, but you can kind of think about that in the context of which social uh, social posts that you or social um, 
uh, tools that you already use. Um, but the main driver is post where your audience is. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, if you're a nonprofit who is super hip and you use TikTok, then that's great. Um, but if you're not and all of your followers are on Facebook, then only post on Facebook. You don't need to diversify at this point in time. Um, just go where your audience is because that's where you'll get the most traction. Um, you can also schedule your social posts ahead of time. That way, you know, you're, the system that you use, um, uh, you know, examples like Hootsuite, uh, or, you know, you can also, I think you can schedule right through some of the um, platforms themselves. You can schedule ahead of time. That way uh, you're not dealing with having to coordinate your social posts. You are interacting with people who are commenting on your social posts that were posted for you on the giving day. So that, and cause we all, um, the algorithm, you know, that they use that the, these companies use, uh, those social posts that have you commenting and people interacting with you on the social posts, those will get pushed up higher into people's news feeds that follow you, as opposed to a, you know, just a simple post that nobody likes, or, you know, maybe four people like, if you're able to inter interact with them and engage with them during the giving day, those posts will receive more visibility uh, in the news feed than if um, you know, you, you're so busy trying to just post things, you don't have time to comment on them. So I highly recommend scheduling what you can ahead of time. If you have the budget, I would say go ahead and boost your posts as well. Um, it's really easy to do um, in Facebook, particularly, um, and you know you don't need a lot of money to boost the posts and 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 get more visibility out of your posts. So I highly recommend looking into that um, because you can you can reach a, a pretty specific audience uh, within you know it allows you to do that for those boosted posts. So um, I highly recommend looking into that to see if that's an avenue that you want to go down. Um, and then also creative engaging content uh, uh, within the algorithms as well for the news feeds, um, you'll want to have posts that have images or videos um, every time. So uh, it, uh, posts that are just text are not going to get as much visibility as posts that have images or pictures. Plus, people interact with those kinds of posts more than uh, if it was just an, uh, a line of text or saying, you know, we're participating in NWA Gives, please help us out, link to donate. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you provide some sort of picture, some sort of quick video. Some nonprofits like to do Facebook Lives the day of to say, um, oh, my goodness, this is happening. Look how much look how many people have given to us so far. It's amazing. Um, people really like that kind of interaction and engagement. And then the more interaction and engagement you can get from them out of your social media followers, the more visibility you'll have to others outside of your scope. Um, so it's just really important to include those types of, uh, you know, visual pieces, um, uh, as well as obviously, you know, interesting content um, and clear call to actions um, for the day of. Uh, we do have social media um, uh, tips and information in the in the toolkit as well. Um, so I highly recommend going there and kind of scanning through it to see, you know, if any ideas jump out at you uh, that you can incorporate within your um, your giving day. Um, Hmm. Okay, so giving day follow up. Um, all of you understand the concept of following up after a donation, the same thing applies to the giving day so everyone that has donated you'll want to make sure you're prompt uh, and thank them for donating. Um, close the loop with the giving event impact so that you can say this is how much we raised. Thank you so much for your support during NWA gives. Um, it means everything to us. Um, if you have new donors that come in, make sure you give them special attention. Uh, you know, make sure you personally reach out to them, let them know how much their support meant to you, um, and then what you're doing with the funds that they gave. And then, you know, whatever onboarding plan you have for new donors, incorporate that into your NWA Gives donors as well. Um, which this will obviously set yourself up with the year-round stewardship and communication, so that next year during NWA Gives, your ask to them to donate during the Giving Day is not a surprise. They've been you know, kind of being stewarded by you throughout the year and hopefully are turned into a regular giver um, uh, at that point in time. Uh, lastly, um, I appreciate everyone's time. Um, Laura, I know, is like the number one communicator with uh, the NWA Gives stuff. Uh, if you have any technical questions, you're welcome to come to us. Uh, 
our support team is available on Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central. Our email is right there. You're also welcome to call us if you want. If you need extra handholding or just, you know, if you're confused, um, you're not sure where to find something, our support team is happy to do uh, screen shares with you to help walk you through, um, you know, where to find everything as well. So, um, Chris and Laura, anything to add? I actually don't see any questions unless I'm missing something, which is great because we are out of time. But uh, yeah, do you do you all have anything to add? Just excited that everyone's joining us and please feel free to reach out if you need anything. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, uh, our information's at the bottom. Uh, you can reach Laura at info at nwagives.org. Um, but again, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Um, this is a lot of content. If you have any questions about anything at all, please do not hesitate to reach out and ask. We're more than happy to help kind of talk through things with you um, and help you with whatever you need. Um, and I know Laura has been a really amazing resource to everyone as well um, as she, you know, kind of, uh, you know, reels everyone in and sends them information and sends emails and all that good stuff. Um, Chris, any last minute words before we, before we end? Uh, no, I think we've got 30, uh, about 35 days before uh, April 7th. Um, we'll have a rally uh, the week before, but uh, I hope you guys will do a lot of great uh, planning and work uh, to get ready so that you can uh, really see a lot of great results. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming and participating. We really appreciate it, and we hope you have a great day.